and Strength, it's me, Wayman, and I want to come on and do a video about uh, this interesting thing that happened. Church canceled funeral because deceased son was gay, family says. This is out of the uh, Huffington Post, and I'm going to read a little bit of this and then talk about what's going on. And this kind of stuff really makes me upset. I'll post the link for it down below. The day before Julian Evans' funeral was scheduled to happen in Tampa, Florida's New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, Evans' mother reportedly got a phone call from the pastor because the deceased was gay. He said the church would not would, would have to cancel the funeral. It was devastating, said uh, Julie Atwood. The mother told NBC, I did feel like he was being denied the dignity of death. According to the family, the church learned of Evan's orientation after an obituary in a local paper identified uh, Kendall Capers, his husband and partner of 17 years as such. Atwood said she was notified of the cancellation during his wake. Uh, T.W. Jenkins, a pastor at the church, stood by the decision. So he doubles down. Uh, Jenkins said the church preaches against gay marriage. Uh, based on our preaching of the scripture, we would have been in error to allow the service in our church, Jenkins said. I'm not trying to condemn anyone's lifestyle, but at the same time I am a man of God and I have to stand up for my principles. Fortunately, Awa was able to secure a last-minute venue for her son, who died of an illness um, called uh, amyloidosis, A-M-Y-L-O-I-D-O-S-I-S. But some attendees who weren't aware of the change showed up at New Hope and missed the funeral. This is 2014, and it's not the 60s and 70s, Caper told NBC. So at the end of the day, I just want his wrongdoing to be exposed. So, so this is the thing, and and this is mainly going out to people who are non-believers, non-church attenders, and, and their view of evangelical Christianity, and their view of evangelical fundamentalism. And there's two different things, and I always said, it, it's not what they say, it's not how they project themselves to the outside, it's not how they project themselves to other people. It's what they do. So friends, it's always what they do. And, and I think another main problem that outsiders and agnostics and atheists and non-believers have is their view that Christ was compassionate and all this, when in fact, he was not. And you need to stop listening to those gospel sermons that they've always pounded into your head, even as a secularist, you still believe it, where the message is, oh, Jesus was love and compassionate and, and all these things. And then you go to church and you're there for three Sundays and you find out that is not the case at all when people start getting nosy, start being judgmental and telling you what to do. And, and if you go to this Huffington Post article, uh, I believe it's the Huffington Post uh, Glocker article, um, down below, you can read comments of people who, who left, and they're leaving their comments. And, and this is great, because in the comments section, it just ends up being a dumping ground for all the reasons why folks don't go. And, and it's bad publicity for the church, and Christianity, and evangelical fundamentalism in general. And, and so, what I want to do is, is show that double message. And, and we need to stop thinking that there are friends and that they care about us, they're not our friends. They believe that they're in an imaginary cosmic war, and it's either us or them. And you're either on the side of Jesus or God, and, or you're not. And if you're not, look out, right? So, so we need to get that in our minds. So they might be projecting, hey, you know, our church is about love, and we're one of you, and this and that. That's only for the first two Sundays. After you get the free pencil, then comes everything. Then comes judgmentalism. Then comes everything that ends up being a huge nightmare. Uh, telling you what to do, telling you what to read, telling you how to think. It's insane, right? 
we need we need to stop thinking that we need I guess what I'm saying friends we need to have our own biblical view of it we cannot be using a believer's view of how Christianity is supposed to be projected for ourselves we need to create our own and see the reality of it by reading it you, you cannot get any information just listening to evangelical fundamentalism preaching this sermon of love and projecting that to the outside world when in their lives they can't even live it themselves and, and another important thing and in which, which a lot of seculars don't understand and non-believers I feel don't understand is that once you adopt the biblical view of morality your own view of morality goes out the window because the biblical always would trump a person's own morality that's dangerous so where you would have a person who might feel compassion for somebody and it's it's not biblical that compassion is it's pretty much um, justified away and a lot of heinous crimes can be heinous can be committed uh, through this and were committed and a lot of uh, unspeakable atrocities were justified by simply a person appealing to the morality of God rather than their own morality they preach against appealing to your own morality and God's God's plan is higher God's morality is higher that is false how do we know that because we see the world that we live in today they blame it on sin but a lot of times and most of the time it's a person and believers turning off their own sense of morality following the group and following what they believe is the biblical part of it so this church here would be fine probably burying a divorced person when the Bible and Christ speaks very plainly against divorce however they can't have a funeral for gays so, so what I want to do is, I, I don't know if this New Hope Minis uh, Missionary uh, Baptist Church are, are a form of denomination, because there seems to be a lot of them, but, but the top one um, in a search you'll find, um, they're pretty much all over Florida. I found like four or five links, but I just want to click one here, because I, I want to point out how they project themselves to me and you, non-believers to the outside world when once you're in there that is not the case at all so so here on the front page and I'll post it this this church probably did not and a lot of times these churches and how they react to the outside world depends on the minister so so this church probably didn't have anything to do with it but but I'm just gonna read this is from a New Hope Missionary Baptist Church and, and I'm just going to read a part of this section. This is from one of them. I, I don't know, like I said before, if they're part of the denomination. This is right on their front page. New Hope Family welcomes you. A New Hope Family is made up of people just like you. Our family makeup is a vast array of God's humanity. We are seniors and youth, retirees, blue-collar and white-collar workers, married and single. We are from all over the United States of America, England, South America, the Caribbean, most importantly, we are most definitely and unashamedly Christians. We are people just like you. So they try to project themselves. Hey, been there, we're all sinners. However, when it comes right down to it, that is not the case. That is not the case. So non-believers, again, stop accepting this view from evangelicalism and gospel churches and all the things that we hear every day here in America dealing with evangelicals that God is love and compassionate you've never read the Bible you've never read the Bible and a, a lot of times when you go to articles like these non-believers are chastising this church saying oh how could you Jesus compact we need to we need to stop that view because it's not and the actions of those people 
who is supposed to be a reflection of Christ, reflection of the Bible, are actually reflecting the Bible and <laughs> reflections of Christ. So we just need to stop thinking. We, we know we hear the message constantly is beat into our minds and our heads that God's love and all that, but that's just to get you in the door. It's not how they really live their lives. And it comes up every day. I, I see articles like this every day. So our, our human morality would appeal and say, yeah, bury the guy. Bury the guy. And I think if I was that minister, which I was not, and obviously, you know, he's appealing to God's morality here, um, I would say, look, I have compassion on my church member. And even though the son did something, or had a lifestyle that I personally don't approve of, it would be kind of me to support that church member in a time of need and distress and, and have a decent funeral for the guy. And even back in the Old Testament, friends, in Ezekiel 18, it says, you know, the sins of the father are not the sins of the son. And here, this pastor uh, seems to be having his teeth set on edge, um, from eating sour grapes. And if you don't know what I mean, uh, read Ezekiel 18 and it'll pretty much set it up. But we just, we just have to change what's going on. And you cannot change it from the inside out. They have no sense of their own morality, only from God. And that is a terrifying thing. There is, there's no limitations on what they would do and have done. We, we have examples. So take care, friends, and remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.